Yeah. Uh, was it interesting or did I waffle? It was really, really interesting. You're okay. fascinating. Good. So good. Because I don't know, you know, when you go off into one and you think, what did I just say? I don't remember. Well, so, yeah. I heard everything. So <laughs> you're good. Two seconds. Two seconds. Hello, fellow peacemakers. Guess what? We have our very own Make Peace Not Beef tote bags. Look at this beautiful thing. I'm totally gonna carry it with me everywhere I go, even if it's empty. Now, I wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsor, No Issue, for gifting us these fabulous, eco-friendly tote bags made with 100% organic cotton and water-based ink. Now, the best part is I'll be doing an Instagram giveaway for these beautiful tote bags. So make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MakePeaceNotBeef to get a chance to win one of these beautiful tote bags. Now, if you're looking for sustainable packaging, mailers, cards, stickers, food safe for your brand or business, then you need to give No Issue a try. No Issue will satisfy your brand or personal needs with customized, beautiful, creative, and sustainable packaging solutions while being 100% committed to environmental sustainability. All their products are either compostable, reusable, or recyclable. Plus, they will plant trees every time you purchase their product to support reforestation around the world so we can reduce climate change sooner. Go to noissue.ca to check out their awesome and cool products. Hello, fellow peacemakers. Imagine beautiful sculptures that absorb pollution from the air and clean up the city. Sounds too good to be true? It's officially reality. She's also my first guest with a Wikipedia page, and that's kind of a big deal because she's doing <laughs> truly innovative work at the intersection of art, technology, and environment. Welcome to episode 28 of Make Peace Not Beef. I am beyond excited for this episode because our guest today is a revolutionary and futuristic London-based artist and quantum physicist that makes pollution absorb sculptures. So she has had numerous exhibitions and installations around the world, including the Museum of London, the Anderson Contemporary in New York, and Palazzo del Prigioni in Venice. So now, without further ado, I want to give a very warm welcome to Dr. Jasmine Pradesito. Oh my gosh, Jasmine, I'm so thrilled to have you on the show. How on earth do I follow that up? That wonderful energy. Thank you so much for such a wonderful introduction. Thank you. So Jasmine, in what ways are you a scientist and in what ways are you an artist? Science and science and art are both about an appreciation for the natural world, right? And they are both about using the senses. They are both about observation. Mm -hmm. The difference between art and science, if there is one, is that science is limited by the natural laws, right? So I say that, but of course, then you know, quantum physics is like woo, 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 woo. <laughs> but in in you know, in general, we are you know, light doesn't go around corners and and things like that. Whereas in art, anything you can imagine is possible. And that's the difference. Jasmine, tell us about your work. You know, what are these pollution absorbing sculptures that you're working on? What harmful <laughs> substances do they absorb and what materials are they made out of? <laughs> Explain us the science. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to show. I'm going to show you a couple. I'm going to show you a couple yeah, of my yeah. projects for the moment. Yeah, um, can you see those? Oh, oh yes, I can see it. So, so tell me. Uh, so this one, can you see this one? Oh, yes, oh, the oh, hands. Those, yeah, those. So those ones are my son's hands holding his asthma papa. This is one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. I call it the air apocalypse. Um, this one is called Sankofa. And you remember I mentioned Adelaide uh, and she's surrounded by branches that came from a forest fire. And oh gosh, that, this, this swirly whirly piece is the first one I ever made. This wow. is one of the pieces, the big sculpture in Houston is surrounded by shapes like that. And then these little teeny tiny ones, these are made from corn leaves in Knox Tech. So this one's Carlia Lily, because I'm really into biomimicry in a big way, big way. And this one's called Fighting Fish. I love the idea of the samurai fighting fish that are so competitive that they basically <laughs> kill everything that's in their environs. And then, oh, one of the pendulum painting pieces. This was the body of work before the plastics work, before the pollution work. And I'm not sure if you can see this one. This is yes. made up. Okay, so this one's made of plastic. Uh, this one's called Plastic Planet. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. How does it have that rainbow color? Uh, ha, ha. This is where the physics really comes in. So certain plastics will split white light uh, depending uh. on how you treat them and the wavelength. So yeah, that's one of the, one of my friends who was a writer called them quantum sculptures, so you're a quantum sculptor. So it is actually using a lot of quantum physics in order to separate the, the oh light, but. Oh my God. So if, 
so she's a body and I am returning to some of this work now as well um oh, wow innovation has always been my thing the the rising cases of asthma is due to air pollution pretty much yeah mm -hmm. although we in December we had the very first ruling in this country that uh, a young girl called um Ella Kissy Deborah died prematurely from pollution it was the very first ruling of its kind god that's the thing climate change is killing people and you know it's a slow kill but we, we see it which is you know which is why i've dedicated a whole my my life to solving this crisis and i'm so sorry to hear that you know your son suffered from asthma but I, I love how you know you made something really beautiful out of this and you became an artist and an advocate for this issue and i think that's so powerful <laughs> and empowering i think what jasmine was trying to emphasize is ultimately the why behind why we do things and we kind of got lost in the mix right back in the days you know i think there was a vision of the future and now we don't know where we're headed <laughs> with how fast technology is progressing and like maker culture with 3D printing, producing so much waste, you know, just printing for the sake of printing, but not, not rather having a, a, a bigger mission or a vision in mind when doing that. And that could lead to a dangerous place, like with AI, right? You know, the interesting thing I think about all the time, think about all the cells and the atoms in our body, like our, my, each cell in my body is probably more intricate than anything I could ever imagine. Like, I don't even understand myself and, and the very cells that make up my own body and the ATP and how it makes energy and mitochondria and how it works together. Like this is crazy for me to think about. Like my, my own body is like a godly design that I don't even know how, I don't even understand myself and how I work. But let me ask you, so Jasmine, in your opinion, how can artists help combat climate change? First of all, they, they need to, so, okay, there's one, there's one thing that's happening at the moment in the UK. I think it's going to be going international. It's called Culture Declares an Emergency. So the, uh, the museum I worked with last year, I think they were one of the first. So the idea is that museums and institutions, because don't forget, they are great big icons, if you like, of education. A lot of people go through those halls. So the idea with the Culture Declares an Emergency is that museums are saying, right, we're really going to try and become aware of of everything that we use, everything that we create, our mm -hmm. carbon footprint, how can we change it? How can we make it better? How can we educate more? So in terms of art, it does mean that we are going to have to question the big art fairs all the way around the world, people flying here, there and everywhere, shipping mm -hmm. work. Wow, Jasmine, that was a we had a phenomenal conversation today i don't even know where we ended up like i think we started in a podcast and then we got into this like whole deep philosophical branch and then now we're pulling ourselves back into reality yeah. Yeah. um yeah it feels like we've already leaped through the cosmos and came back <laughs> on the other side of the wormhole i just told you sunday afternoon thank you so much jasmine once again for your time and, and the wonderful conversation and listeners please go check out jasmine's art she's also got a very fascinating biography one of the best i've ever read by anyone so please go read it and uh, feel free to get in touch with her on instagram and twitter uh sorry what is it again the instagram handle oh instagram is just jasmine pradesito it's just my name jasmine pradesito okay please go check out jasmine's work she's doing awesome stuff and feel free to get in touch with her so yeah thank you so much peacemakers for oh my gosh i almost forgot what i called my listeners <laughs> Thank you so much, listeners, for listening to episode 28. I will see you in the next episode.